as well of, of going into these long-term care homes and seeing how horrible the conditions were. Donc, ce qu'on a vu sans cette, uh, cette What pandémie. we've seen during this pandemic, the, what really hit hard internationally is seniors in long-term care were the most hard hit in this pandemic. It's an international uh, phenomenon. In this pandemic, the problem that existed in long-term care had been there a long time. COVID-19 only raised these problems. And what we've learned is clearly is that long-term care inaudible. The armed forces were sent to help and sent traumatic images, the same people who saw war. And they said what, way they, what they saw in long-term care homes was worse in many cases. It's a national shame and we need to act. Justin Trudeau worked with the Conservatives to vote against the motion to protect the profits of the ultra rich instead of helping our seniors. We, as New Democrats, were different. We want to face this crisis, we want to save lives, and we want to put an end to for-profit long-term care homes. What we've seen in long-term care has been horrible, it's been horrific, it's been traumatic, but we can't accept it. We can't allow it to continue. It can't be that our seniors and our loved ones were the brunt of this pandemic and then we forget about it. What Maureen and what Dr. Ari are saying is we have to do something to save lives, and we can. Right now, as it stands, when we fund long-term care, some of that money is going to the pockets of shareholders. That is wrong. Canadians don't want our public money going to make people richer. It should be going to protect and care for our loved ones. And that's why we're saying, first and foremost, a new Democrat government would make sure we remove profit from long-term care, starting with Rivera, which Dr. Aria pointed out was one of the worst providers of care and is the second largest provider of long-term care homes. We would start there and make it public. We would work with provinces and territories to accelerate making sure there is no more profit-driven delivery of care. We need it to be publicly delivered. And we know the evidence is clear. When it is public, when it is not for profit, there are better outcomes. People are better off. We save lives. We want to do that. While Justin Trudeau and the Conservatives don't think that this is a big deal, they don't care about it, they're satisfied with this private delivery of care, we are not. We're going to stand up and fight back and defend the lives of our seniors, those who have sacrificed so much, those who deserve dignity in their, in their retirement, they deserve dig dignity in their last years of life. We will be there for them. We are committed to that. Merci beaucoup. Thank you so much. And with that, I'm ready for any questions you might have. Before I go to questions, I want to add one other thing. Justin Trudeau recently made a housing announcement. And I want to say very clearly, that after six years of Justin Trudeau being Prime Minister, the conditions of housing, the housing crisis has only gotten worse. Housing has become more expensive, renting has become more expensive. Canadians can't afford another four years of broken promises from Justin Trudeau on housing. Merci, and uh, with that, I'm ready to take any questions you might have. In French? And to conclude, I would like to say that Justin Trudeau announced something on housing, and we know that for six years that he was in power, the situation has worsened. And now it's more expensive to buy a home or rent a home. People cannot afford uh, Justin Trudeau and his broken promises with, with regard to housing. Thank you. We will go to Tom Perry from CBC News. Hi, Mr. Singh. Thanks for uh, taking our questions. Thank you to your guests for uh, sharing your stories. Um, you say in your release that New Democrats would remove control from for-profit operators in long-term facilities. Can you tell me what, well, who would control them? What system do you envision? Also, according to the 
Canadian Institute for Health Information, there's about 600 long-term care, for-profit care homes in Canada. What would it cost to take control of those 600 homes? So first of all, let's talk about our goal. Uh, unequivocally, our goal is to make sure there is no more, no more for-profit delivery of care. There's no question about it. And we know that this is vital. We have to do this. Uh, the crisis has shown it really clear. For-profit delivery of care is worse for people. And so we are committed to that. And, and to do this, uh, we, we've been up against the same problem in the past. When we brought in universal health care, they were private hospitals. They were very common across Canada. We had to use the Canada Health Act to, to make sure that that care did not continue to remain private and we wanted to make it public. Similarly, we provide funding and that funding should go towards the best quality of care, should go towards staffing, should not go towards profits. We can figure out a way to make sure this is better using the Canada Health Act the same way we did when we tackled private hospitals. The question here is, are we okay with the way things are? Are we okay with the deaths of our loved ones and seniors? Are we okay with the status quo? I, for one, am absolutely not okay with it. We need to do better. New Democrats are committed to making it better. But do you see a national system? Do you see the federal government stepping in? Do you see the provinces stepping in? Who's gonna, if the private company is not going to run this, who will? And again, I have to ask you, how much is it going to cost to take control of 600 long-term care facilities? One, we can't afford not to act. If we don't do anything, we're going to see hundreds of seniors die. That's not a price I'm willing to pay. So I can tell you that right now. I'm not going to pay the price of hundreds of seniors dying because they're neglected, because they're starved, because they're not being fed, because they're not getting water, because they're dehydrated. That's a price I'm not willing to pay. We can do this. And what we'll do is a number of things. First off, there's not-for-profit models of care. They are shown to work. There's public models of care. They work. We are funding these, this care anyways. We are funding this care. Wouldn't it make sense when we fund this care to make sure that care is only publicly delivered or that care is not profit driven? We can do this. If we fund this care anyways, if we're contributing to this care, we want all those dollars, every single dollar that we spend as a federal government, as provincial and municipal governments, I want every single cent of money that we spend going directly to care. In fact, it is less costly if our money is going towards care than if it's going towards care plus profit. We want it to all go towards care. There are ways to deliver this care. We know that it works. We know that not-for-profit not for profit models work. We know that municipal profit uh, models work. We know that public delivery works. That's what we're focused on, and we want to make it happen. Next question, we have Kreeson Ajikte from CTV News. Hi, hey, Mr. Singh. Thanks for taking my question. Thanks for the guests for giving their stories as well. Um, so, Mr. Singh, you also said we you, you would implement a care guarantee uh, to guarantee residents that they receive safe, dignified care, and uh, you would put a ban in the development of any new uh, for-profit care homes. How exactly would you be able to do that? Um, what types of things can you do if you were to become the next leader? Well, with the care guarantee, what we've seen in, in this pandemic is the, the outcomes or what happened wasn't the same in every province. The military were called into Ontario and Quebec, but there were other provinces that had that had less of, a, of outbreaks or had better care. So let's look at what the best practices are. What is the best possible way to take care of people? You know, one of the things that has come out very clearly is hours of care. If you have more hours of care, we know that seniors are, are healthier, are better cared for. It seems pretty obvious, but that is something that has been very clear. When hours of care are low, when staffing levels are low, then the seniors are more at risk. They're more likely to get sick. They're more likely to die. So let's put in place, what does a care guarantee look like? What is the best possible care when it comes to residents? What is the best possible care when it comes to hours of care and the staffing levels and who those staff are? The number of hours of nurses, of physicians, of personal support workers. Let's establish what the best practices are so that we can set standards that this is what good care looks like. This is what we should be striving towards. And in terms of, of how we achieve this and how we uh, bring about this change. It's going to take working together. It's not easy. I'm not claiming it's going to be easy, but I know that it's essential. I know that. I know that we have to do it. And so we can look at what we've done in the past. We have tackled the same question about private care in our own past. In Canada, there were private hospitals. There was private delivery of care, and we fought against that. And collectively, we solved that problem. I believe we can do it again, and I believe we need to do it again. And our seniors and their lives are at stake here. And to me, the odds 
uh, are not, I mean, the stakes are so high that we have to get this right. Next question, we have David Aiken from Global News. Hi, good morning. Uh, morning. Mr. Sang. Good to see you. Thank you to your guests as well. Um, just let me push back a little bit on this idea. Um, it, we certainly know that there was a clearly documented problem that was specific to for-profit health care, uh, uh, long-term care homes, no question. Um, but we have examples, let's say the airline industry. We don't have planes crashing in the sky, for-profit airlines are running around because the federal government is very strict, there's very strict standards, there's high penalties. We have a new passenger bill of rights. Why wouldn't the path of easiest resistance be national standards for all long-term care homes, minimum staffing ratios, pandemic preparedness plans, uh, constant and frequent inspections? Wouldn't that be the path of least resistance to best protect people in long-term care homes? I don't think it's an either or. I think we absolutely need to make sure that there's good standards of care. There's no question about that. And there needs to be good um, mechanisms to make sure that that care is actually happening. So there's no question about it. We need enforcement of those standards. We need accountability, no question about it. But really what it comes down to, and what to me is a really compelling argument, is that we are spending our public money, taxpayer dollars, on the care of our, of our loved ones, of seniors. Why would we allow even a cent of our public hard-earned dollars, taxpayer dollars, why would we allow even a cent of that to go towards lucrative for-profit companies like Rivera? These are, these are wealthy corporations. These are large, profitable corporations. Why should we allow even a cent of our dollars to go towards their profits instead of the care of our loved ones? That's the problem. And when it comes to care, you know, if we're on an airline and the food's not so good, it's only a couple hours flight. If you're living in a long-term care home and the food's not so good, it means you get malnourished and you die. It's a very different scenario. And so when it comes to care, to me, we need to have the best quality care and it's not just about standards, it's about the goal. The goal of a for-profit home is not to care for people, it's to make profit. And anytime when you're talking about caring about vulnerable people, if the goal is profit, corners are gonna be cut and people are gonna suffer. And that to me is just not out. Uh, I'm gonna change topics for the next one. Um, the Liberal leader today took note of your campaign. Of course, not in a good way. This happens time to time in election campaigns, I think you saw it last time, that the Liberals are going to try to scare some people who might be considering voting New Democrat by warning them that a vote for a New Democrat is a vote for Aaron O'Toole to become PM. And uh, I wonder if you've got a particular answer to that one <laughs> this time around. <laughs> well, I mean, I just look at, you know, we're talking about long-term care homes today. The, there is no difference between the Conservatives and the, and, the, and the Liberals on this question because they both teamed up to vote against removing long-term care home profit from long-term care home. Put another way, they both voted in favor of private long-term care homes. They're both okay with private care. That to me means that they're not going to make things better. If your loved one and you're worried about your loved one being in a long-term care home and your question is, well, who do I vote for in this election? Who's gonna protect my loved one? Who's gonna protect my family? Who's gonna make sure they get the best care possible? Well, it's clear, both the Liberals, Justin Trudeau, and the Conservatives believe in for-profit care. We are the only ones saying it should not be for-profit, it should be not-for-profit, it should be people first, it should be our loved ones first. They deserve dignity and respect. That's one question. Whether it's housing, which is another issue that Justin Trudeau is talking about today. Well, under Justin Trudeau being Prime Minister, the housing condition has gotten worse in six years. What makes people believe all of a sudden he woke up today and decided, okay, you know, that made the housing condition worse for six years, but now I'm gonna somehow make it better. He had six years to deal with this. If he cared about it, wouldn't the housing crisis not be here? He had six years. He's asking for a four year mandate. He just had six years and he couldn't get it right in six years. What makes people believe he's gonna get it right in the next four years? To me, it shows that he loves to do the classic liberal strategy. Why deliver on something when I can just promise it in an election? And that's, the, that's what I see liberals doing often. And that's why I would say to Canadians, let's vote differently then. Why do we need to go with the same parties that keep on making it harder for your lives? En français, s'il te plaît? Oh, ça va être difficile en français. Oh, it'll be difficult in French. Uh, Justin Trudeau. Justin Trudeau often talks about what he will do in this election. And it's interesting because he had six years to show what he could do. 
If we talk about uh, this question of long-term care, he supports the conservative position that long-term care centers, for-profit ones, are acceptable. For us, our position is different. We say clearly no. We should not have for-profit uh, long-term care centers. Our pro proposal is different. And the pro liberals and conservatives have the same position for private service. And then the housing crisis. If Justin Trudeau wanted to do something, he had six years to do something new. And in six years, instead of improving the situation, things got worse. It's more expensive now to buy a home, and it's more expensive to rent an apartment. So how can people believe Justin Trudeau when he had six years to fix the same problems and he says, now I will fix them? I'm telling Canadians, you have a choice in this election. A new Democrat that will put, prioritize you or and make sure the ultra-rich pay their fair share. That is our commitment. Next question, we have Annie Burfer Oliver from CTV News. Hi there, I have a clarification and a question, so it's going to be a bit of a two-parter. Sure, yeah, yeah. First, um, I just want to clarify, so are you saying an NDP government would nationalize all the 600 roughly for-profit care homes in Canada? And the second part is, both of the speakers today talked about the fact that there's not enough home care for people, that there aren't enough options available which is pushing them into long-term care homes, which a lot of seniors and elderly don't want to be in. So what specifically would an NDP government do to help with home care and to ensure that seniors who don't want to go into long-term care homes can actually stay in their own homes? I appreciate the question. Uh, I'll start with um, the long-term care homes. We are saying clearly that we would nationalize Rivera. It is owned by a, uh, it's owned right now by a federal agency. It's completely wholly owned by a federal agency. And we would say, we say clear, clearly, we need to get profit out of long-term care starting with Rivera, which is completely owned by the federal government. That is wrong. It should be public. It should not be for profit. And when it comes to the rest of the long-term care homes, we want to use the same tools that we use with the Canada Health Act to ensure that our dollars that go towards the care of our loved ones go towards their care and don't go towards enriching a company. And so we will use that same model to make sure that we use every resource possible to push uh, the delivery of care to public delivery, not for-profit delivery. And then with the home care question, uh, that's it's so true, and I should have touched on this earlier, that we need to have better investments in home care. There is no question that the best place for people to age is in their home. But as Maureen pointed out, there is not sufficient home care available to give people the care they need to stay at home. And so if we made more investments in home care, we could provide that, that type of support that would allow more people to stay in their homes. And that's where they want to stay. And so absolutely, a part of the solution when we tackle the problem, the crisis of long-term care, is to make more investments in quality home care that should also be publicly delivered to make sure people get the care they need to stay at home. And then if there is a point where people need a long-term care facility, it shouldn't be a death sentence. It shouldn't be someone something that someone is afraid of. It shouldn't be something that someone dreads. In the case of Maureen, she dreaded that decision. It was one of the hardest decisions of her life. She said it clearly, and a lot of people share this, it was worse than actually losing her mom to know that she'd have to go somewhere where she wasn't sure if they were going to get good care. Imagine how that feels. Imagine how that choice feels for so many people. And so many people are forced into that decision because of a crisis, because they can't provide the level of care that someone needs that, that goes through a crisis, whether it's a stroke or, or whether it's Alzheimer's. And they get to a point where they need that extra level of care. It shouldn't be something that someone dreads. There should be a care guarantee where people know that someone's getting the care that they need. And on a second subject, um, the Conservative leader made an announcement on protecting pensions. And just yesterday, another announcement targeted towards workers. In a press release today, the NDP called this announcement, quote, not worth the glossy paper it's worth, it's written on. Can you elaborate? Well, it's really clear, you know, the Conservatives have shown again and again, they're no friend of workers. When Aaron O'Toole was in the cabinet under Harper, we saw the attacks on workers. We saw the back to work legislation. We saw the attacks on the rights of workers and he didn't make life better for workers. And right now, what are workers, what are workers calling for? I've spoken to so many workers in precarious jobs, workers that have a good job but doesn't have benefits, they say, we want to have medication coverage. And Aaron O'Toole teamed up with Justin Trudeau to vote against Farming Care. 
We know that workers want to make sure that their teeth are cared for, and they voted against that as well. Uh, it's clear that Aaron O'Toole is no friend of workers. It's clear that he is a friend of the ultra-rich. When we said we should make the ultra-rich start paying their fair share, we should make companies like Amazon pay their fair share. Amazon is a company that has made record profits in this pandemic. Instead of agreeing, he said, no, we are, we are against that. He voted against that as did Justin Trudeau, showing that he'd rather the burden fall on workers. So he's no friend of workers. He can make announcement all he wants, but his track record and his current positions show he is not a friend of workers. Aaron O'Toole can say what he wants, but we have his record. Well, and he was in the Harper government, and he cut. Uh, he made life harder for workers. It's clear that Aaron O'Toole's uh, position is, is against uh, the will of the workers, and we've said that the ultra-rich should pay the, their part to invest in people. Amazon, uh, for example, with their record profits, should pay their fair share, but Aaron O'Toole and Justin Trudeau voted against this motion, and they said, basically, that the pressure should fall on the shoulders of workers, so it's clear that he's not a friend of workers. He can say what he wants, but his track record uh, and his statements are there. Uh, Mr. Singh, with the Conservatives, a few days ago, they said they, they made an announcement against, uh, in the fight against uh, opioids, and now they're making a, announcements about workers. What do you say? about this incursion into the left of the Conservatives, especially now that they're in Hamilton. It's because the Conservative track record is clear. They don't fight for people. It's clear with the former Conservative government where Aaron O'Toole was a minister, it's clear from their statements, their position, they're not in favor for the advantage of workers. They have clearly voted against a motion that said we should, we need to get the ultra-rich to pay their fair share. But instead of that, he protected uh, the uh, interests of the ultra-rich. So it's clear from that he's no friend of workers. And we are the party of workers. We are a party for people. We are a party that always prioritizes the needs of people. On today's announcement, what, how would you impose long-term care Pan-Canada? Would it apply to CHSLDs in Quebec, for example? What I want to do is to present the best practices. We know that there are practices in BC that worked in this pandemic. Pandemic, but there were also there were good practices and bad practices. Why not bring them all together and present and provide high quality care? Why not show the practices that work in centers? These are the guarantees we need, the criteria for good health care quality health care. I think it's important. We also saw doctors in Quebec are demanding the same thing, to bring together all the practices that are good for people, what will help people. And we recognize the right uh, to uh, retire with full compensation in Quebec, but what we're doing today is how can we help people? How can we work together to improve the situation? The armed forces and Canadian armed forces had to be sent out to Quebec as well. So the situation in Quebec is terrible. So we want to help people. We want to protect our seniors, and we'll do that. Next question, Liam Casey from the Canadian Press. Good morning, Mr. Singh. Um, elections Canada won't open on-campus polling stations in this election. Are you concerned it could affect your youth turnout? What are your chances in certain items? I just kind of missed a bit of it. Can you step closer to the mic? Maybe? Elections Canada says they won't open polling stations on campuses. Okay. Um, I'm wondering if you, you're concerned that will affect youth turnout, 
general and potentially winning certain writings? Yeah, I, I want to make sure that voting is as easy as possible, and I wanted to see uh, voting happen on campuses. Though a lot of campuses have been closed or have, have had online courses, a lot of students still live close to a campus. It's still a place for them to, it's still easy for, for students to access. They know where to go, and it would be easier. And anytime it's easier, it encourages more participation. So for me, really, the question is, how do we get as many people possible to get out and vote? We want to encourage voting, make it easier to vote. We want people to participate and to do that this would be one tool having on-campus voting has been shown to help encourage more more participation and for me that's a priority always thank you on uh, long-term care how will you convince provinces to move away from the for-profit model this is this is the challenge it's not going to be easy and i don't ever suggest it's going to be easy but it is essential it is something we have to do. We have to get profit out of long-term care because the evidence is so overwhelming. There is no deny there's no denying the facts and there's no doubt that for-profit care is worse for our seniors. It means they get less quality care and it means they're more likely to get sick and to die. That to me is more than enough. That is more than enough to convince people. Shouldn't we want to save people? Shouldn't we want to save our loved ones and our seniors? And so we'll use all the tools we have to work together with provinces. This is not different from when we wanted to bring in universal health care. It started by Tommy Douglas in Saskatchewan, and then we wanted to bring the idea to the national stage, and there were some provinces that didn't agree. And now it's one of our most cherished national programs, the fact that we've got, or one of our most cherished national identity, that we've got universal health care for all. The same way that we made that happen, we need to make it happen in long-term care. It cannot be that long-term care is no longer is not a part of our universal health care system. It can't be that for-profit continues, and I'm committed to doing whatever I can to achieving the reality of a, of a publicly delivered and not-for-profit model when it comes to long-term care. Next question, we have Natasha O'Neill from The Pointer. Hi, Mr. Singh. Hey um, it's no secret that Peel has been really hit really, really hard with the pandemic, and many of the findings that you were speaking about that the military found were actually here in Peel. I know that you're a national leader, but how are you going to advocate for Peel, who continues to get left out of a lot of policies and a lot of funding? I, I really appreciate the question. It is it is so sad how how Peel is a community of frontline workers, of workers in logistics, uh, workers that helped keep Canada going when we were in this pandemic. The food that we ate, the goods that we needed, it was here in Peel that a lot of that work was done, a, a great deal of that work was done here. And because the workers here were on the front lines, this is a community that was one of the hardest hit, the high rates of COVID-19. This is a community, this is a community that also saw some of the, the horrible conditions we spoke about in long-term care happen here in Peel as well. And so when I advocate for getting profit out of long-term care, I know the communities that are hardest hits will be will be the communities that get the help, will get help the most. And so that's one of the things that, that I've been advocating for. When we know, when we talked about paid sick leave, paid sick leave was one of the things that, that experts had said was one of the most important tools to save lives. And we knew that would directly impact people in Peel who have to go to work, had to go in person to work, couldn't work from home because of the nature of their jobs in transportation or logistics, in warehouses. They had to go and work, go to work in person. And because they didn't have paid sick leave, would go to work sick. And we saw workplace transmission was one of the highest causes of sickness or the highest rates of, of infection happen in workplaces. We can fix that by putting in, bringing in these programs. So when we talk about making sure there's good paid sick leave, when we talk about getting profit out of long-term care, that will directly help people here in Peel because they were the hardest hit. Uh, your campaign focuses a lot on the youth vote, um, but it's also important to acknowledge their older generations that are also voting. Um, many of these older generations, in Ontario especially, remember the NDV government of the 90s, Bob Ray, and a lot of them were really, really unhappy with this government. Are you any different from this government, and how, what can you tell these older generations who may be on the fence voting for you because of the past? Well, Bob Ray became the leader of the Liberal Party, so I think that kind of gives a sense of where his values were. But more importantly, uh, we have seen what New Democrats have done. We have seen Andrew Horvath here in Ontario fighting every step of the way for workers, for personal support workers, for frontline care, 
and, and for people. We've seen the track record. At the federal level, folks have seen New Democrats fight for them to bring in more soil. We doubled the amount of serve that people got. We got, we increased the wage subsidy, and in doing that, we saved millions of jobs. We helped millions of people stay in their homes when they needed to and helped keep food on the table. We fought to bring in a federal paid sick leave that helped hundreds of thousands of people, and we brought in support for students who were not covered by CERB. We have shown really clearly what you get when you vote for New Democrats. You get someone that's on your side, that's focused on you. We've also seen what you get with Liberals. The Liberals wanted to do the minimum. They started off the wage subsidy at 10%, which was not going to save enough jobs. We know what you get with Justin Trudeau, someone who believes in for-profit long-term care homes, something we don't believe in. So you have a choice here in this election. Absolutely. We've seen the Liberals and what they've done. They made the housing prices worse. They believe in for-profit long-term care homes. They don't believe in pharmacare. Or you can choose New Democrats who believe that the ultra-rich should pay their fair share. We should invest in our housing crisis. We should invest in health care. We should get profits out of long-term care. People have a choice, and we've shown them what we stand for and what the Liberals stand for.